Ambassador Joseph Wilson joins us on the line. Welcome to Democracy Now! Good morning. How are you? It's very good to have you with us. Well, let's talk first about what Vice President Cheney said about the your Niger claim and his relationship with you and uh, what kind of report you brought back from Niger. Well, first of all, the Vice President is absolutely right. Um, we've never, we've never uh, met. Uh, he was Secretary of Defense when I was in charge of our embassy in Baghdad. And as one of the uh, principals of the National Security Council, he was certainly in National Security Council meetings chaired by President Bush when discussions were being held on reports that I was submitting on a regular basis from Baghdad. So uh, while we've never met, he certainly knows who I am or should know who I am unless his memory is uh, flawed or faulty. Um, the important thing, though, um, is to understand that it was not just the report that I brought back uh, that was part of the U.S. government's uh, information base. There was also a report from our sitting ambassador um, on the ground in NMA. She had gone and consulted with the current government officials. Uh, my own report dealt with previous government officials who had been in office at the time that this purported sale of uranium had, got, had, um, had been, um, been agreed to. And there was also a report uh, submitted to the U.S. government by a four-star Marine Corps general who had traveled to NMA before I had gone there. So in our government files, there were at a minimum three reports that had been generated shortly after the president asked the question, what do we know, or vice president asked the question, what do we know about this? So the interesting thing, it seems to me, is how is it that these bogus documents that were not credible enough to be included in a, an Italian tabloid publication, how did the essence of these documents end up in the State of the Union address? Now, the Vice President can talk about uh, the so-called British White Paper, and the British can say, well, we had specific information that we could not share with the U.S. government because of, um, of, of rules relating to the exchange of information with third parties. But the fact is, the United States spends billions of dollars <clears throat> on intelligence every year, and it's not likely that we're going to subcontract our analysis of intelligence to the British, with all due respect to their own intelligence capabilities. So, moreover, uh, the President's State of the Union address is, of course, the most important speech that he gives in any given year, and this was a particularly important speech in a particularly important year because it dealt with issues of war and peace. So how the question remains in my mind is not whether or not the analysis was correct or the reports were correct. It was not just mine but all the others. The question is how did such a statement, which could not be substantiated, which was not based on our own intelligence, which was not based on facts as we knew them, end up in the president's speech? The vice president didn't answer that question. The, pres the vice president said that no report was submitted. Is that true? Did you did you submit not. a report? Of course not, and, and the vice president knows that. There was a uh, there is a, a evidence of a uh, of a circular uh, cable that was sent around as a consequence of my report. Um, in addition to which, I would I would go back to what I've said repeatedly, and that is that if you are senior enough to ask the question, and the vice president acknowledged, I think for the first time uh, personally, that he had asked the question. If you're se senior enough to ask the question, you are senior enough to get an answer. And um, an answer does not mean that the briefer comes back to you two days later and says, gee, boss, we don't know anything uh, more about this. Uh, the answer means that the agency to whom the question is addressed goes out and tries to determine whether or not they can dig up more and additional information to either validate or discredit the report about which the vice president has asked. So you did file a report? Oh, of course. I did an oral report within an hour of my return, in addition to which, I briefed both the ambassador and somebody else at the embassy before I even left NMA. And I briefed the CIA within an hour of my return from eight days over in Niger. So he lied when he said you didn't file a report? Well, I think he's, he, I'm not sure he lied. Um, uh, it's, it's hard to say in what form that report would have been given to him. And certainly if it was a written report, uh, my own particular identity would not have been revealed to him. So he may not necessarily have attached my name to a report that he received on the subject. Again, his memory may be faulty on this. But given the furor that has erupted over the, quote, 16-word um, statement in Bush's State of the Union address alleging the link between Iraq and Niger and the uranium sale, this certainly would have been investigated um, to, this uh, to this point right now, by now. Well, I, I can't say that. I don't know. 
Um, it's, there, there would be three ways that the vice president would receive an answer to the question he raised. One would be a telephone conversation. Uh, one would be an oral briefing, which may or may not have included um, talking points. Um, and the third would have been a more formal memorandum. And I just, I just simply don't know um, how the agency determined the best way to brief the vice president on the contents of my report. Or, for that matter, how, uh, how the vice president was briefed on the other two reports, one from the uh, ambassador and one from this force our Marine general. Mm-hmm. We are talking to Ambassador Joseph Wilson. We'll be back in a minute. 